Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we just learned our addition and subtraction formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. So in this video we're going to look at some examples of solving out these functions at some new values of angles that we haven't looked at yet, but that we're going to be able to do by hand very easily now with these formulas in our repertoire. So let's take a look. For number one, we want to solve sine of 75 degrees. So let's go with sine of 75 degrees. Now this isn't an angle with, that we're familiar with. We know that in degrees we're familiar with 0, 30, 60, 45, and 90. And in radians, that's the same as 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. So what we need to do with all of these types of problems is we need to try to break up 75 in a way that we're either adding together two angles that we're familiar with or subtracting two angles that we're familiar with from each other. Now here, 75 is not too bad. We know that 75, this is the same as 45 plus 30, isn't it? Okay, so we can solve this because we have our sine addition formula from the last video. So this is equal to sine of 45, cosine of 30, And remember with sine, when we're adding in the argument, we add the two terms on the right. So we have cosine of 45, sine of 30. Now we know the values of each of these trig functions. So we can go ahead and plug those in. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 30 degrees, we know, is root 3 over 2, plus cosine of 45 is also root 2 over 2, and sine of 30 is 1 half. Now adding this all together and multiplying together, we have a common denominator of 4 in both of these terms. Right? We have 2 times 2 over here in my denominator, 2 times 2 over here, and on the top we have root 2 times root 3 which is root 6 and over here we have root 2 times 1 which is root 2 so sine of 75 degrees is the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 over 4 so this is going to we're going to end up being able to work with a lot more angles than we were able to work with up to this point just from these addition and subtraction formulas anything that's a sum or difference of the angles we already have we can now solve Let's take a look at these other ones. For number two, we are looking at, oh, let me clean up here a little bit. So for number two, we're looking at sine of 19 pi over 12. So now we're in radians. So again, we want to find a sum or a difference of values that we know. Now anytime you see over 12 our goal here is going to be to break up my numerator in such a way that the two pieces I break up 19 into both have a common factor with 12. That way the two fractions that I break this into are going to reduce this 12 in the denominator into either 6, 2, 3, or 4 and we'll get something that we can work with. So I have over 12 and let's go ahead and find something with plus. We can use subtraction here as well. There's nothing wrong with that. So looking at plus, um, I know that like you might say, well, let's look at 12 and 7. Um, that's coming from the denominator of 12. The problem with that is that 7 over 12 doesn't reduce to anything. So that's not a value that we know yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at something else. Now notice that if I break this up into 10 pi and 9 pi, Now both of these are going to reduce, aren't they? This is the same thing as sine. 10 pi over 12 is just 5 pi over 6. And 9 pi over 12 is 3 pi over 4. And now we can work with these. So go ahead and plug this into our addition formula. We get sine 5 pi over 6, cosine 3 pi over 4 
Again, we're adding in the argument of my sine, so I'm going to add over here cosine of 5 pi over 6. sine of 3 pi over 4. Now plugging in for each of these, we know all of these. Sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. Cosine of 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. Plus, now cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. and sine of 3 pi over 4 is a positive root 2 over 2. So multiplying this out, this is all over 4. We have a common denominator of 4 in both of these terms again. I have negative square root of 2 minus square root of 6. Now if you want to, you could also write this as negative root 2 plus root 6 over 4. And it turns out that 19 pi over 12 and 75 degrees both have the same reference angle. And we see that this is the same value, just in a different quadrant, so it's negative. Now, we didn't have to use uh, addition here. Notice that we could also have used our subtraction formula. Uh, this is the same as sine of, let's take a look at it. Um, well, I could do 21 pi over 12. That's going to reduce with a common factor of 3. Oops, minus. And the difference here is 2 pi over 12, isn't it? And this is going to reduce to just pi over 6. And then we could use our sine subtraction formula for that. No problem. All right, let's look at number 3. Number 3 is very similar here, but we're dealing with cosine. So cosine pi over 12. Now, there aren't any angles that we can add together that we know to get pi over 12, but we can take a difference here. So let's take a look at what a difference would look like. And it might be easier to think of pi over 12 as 15 degrees here, right? We know that pi over 6 is 30 degrees, so pi over 12 is 15 degrees. And that's the difference between 45 and 30. So let's take a look at what that would be in radians. In radians, that's the difference between pi over 4 and pi over 6. All right, if we were going in the other direction, pi over 4 minus pi over 6, well, pi over 4 is 3 pi over 12, pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12, so the difference here is just 1 pi over 12. So this is exactly what we need. So now we can use our cosine subtraction formula. This gives us cosine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 6, now remember when we have a negative in the argument for cosine, we're going to be adding these terms together. So this is plus sine of pi over 4, sine of pi over 6, now plugging in for these values, cosine and sine of pi over 4 are both root 2 over 2, cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, plus, so again here's sine, we have root 2 over 2 and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So this is going to give me root 6 plus root 2 over 2. And this shouldn't be a, a super big surprise to us. Uh, notice that for sine and cosine we're dealing with the similar reference numbers here whereas here with pi over 12 our reference number is just pi over 12 and here our reference number is 7 pi over 12. And we know that with sine and cosine, we have that symmetry over that line y equals x. So we're going to get, you know, just like um, cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2, for some of those symmetric angles over that y equals x line, we're going to get the same values for sine as we do for cosine for the reflected angle. So this shouldn't come as a surprise to us. Now we can get some stuff like problem 4 here. Here in problem four, we need to solve this out. Now this looks a little bit different than what we've been doing, but we should be able to identify this. This is the addition formula for cosine. Right? If I look at number four, cosine 18, cosine 27, minus sine 18, sine 27, we know this is a cosine formula because we have cosines together and sines together, so this is going to be cosine of something. 
we know it's going to be 18 and 27 we just have to decide is this plus or minus in here and we have to remember for cosine it's the opposite so whatever I have on the right hand side I have the opposite in my argument so this is plus so this is just cosine of 45 degrees which is the square root of 2 over 2 all right and that's it now in the next video we're gonna look at some more of those verifying trig identities problems those proof problems uh, now that we have these additional identities that we can use so we'll see you there